this week at Starbase. Booster 15 has returned to the build site. Ship 35 is sent to the Massey Outpost for cryo testing. Work continues on the tank farm expansion, and crews get to work reconfiguring the build site to accommodate the construction of a new Gigabay. Now let's dig into this week's update. Starting off this week, just after midnight on Friday morning, the launch mount work platform was brought back to the launch site to give crews access to the underside of Booster 15 and the launch mount to perform initial post-launch inspections. Around that same time, Booster 15's transport stand was brought towards Pad A, ready to receive the most recently caught Super Heavy. Later that morning, a new crated vaporizer arrived at the build site gate before eventually being sent down to the launch complex, possibly for installation in the Deluge farm for the new pad. A steady stream of tanker trucks began arriving, working to replenish the tank farm following the launch the day before. As the morning continued, the large yellow Buckner-owned crane began raising its boom at the launch site, being made ready to get back to work. A pair of deliveries of two long interconnected steel plates with Nelson studs for embedding in concrete arrived at the D2 gate. Eventually, at least one of the trucks headed back up the road away from the launch site. Meanwhile, SpaceX's crane followed in the Buckner's crane's footsteps as it too began to raise its boom back up into normal operating configuration. That afternoon was back to business as usual at the tank farm expansion. Multiple loads of prefabricated cryogenic piping and other accessories arrived and were offloaded, while other hardware was being lifted and installed in the area. With both cranes up right now, the Buckner crane began moving across to the other side of Pad B, getting into position for future work and possibly also clearing the way for crews to continue working on the commodities trench. And less than a day after launching and returning for a successful catch, Booster 15 was lifted back off the launch mount and transferred to the awaiting transport stand ahead of its trip back to the build site. That evening, rover cameras spotted signs posted to the doors of the Star Factory building stating that the area of the building was closed. Inside the triangular extension, sections of the concrete floor had been torn up and other demolition had taken place. Given the shape and location of the concrete removal, it seems that new footings may be in store, possibly related to an eventual connection between Star Factory and the soon-to-be-built Gigabay. As the clock approached midnight, Booster 15 began moving across the launch complex towards the D2 gate. The flight-proven Super Heavy then rolled onto Highway 4 and began its return trip to the build site. Once it arrived, the vehicle was eventually taken into Mega Bay 1 for in-depth post-flight inspections. Meanwhile, back at the launch site, workers began removing the damaged vaporizers from the front of the tank farm. Over the next nine hours, a total of three vaporizers were lifted out and laid down for transport, a clear indication that SpaceX has a lot of work to do hardening the new ground infrastructure ahead of future launches. A piling rig was spotted starting work at the edge of the village as SpaceX starts construction of a new apartment building to accommodate the growing housing demands of the new municipality. Back at the tank farm, new pump stands arrived and were offloaded, followed by a new prefabricated skid being lifted for installation. And just a day after being raised back into the air, SpaceX's crawler crane at the launch site began to lower its boom back down for unknown reasons. Up the road in Mega Bay 1, Booster 15 was lifted off its transport stand and transferred to one of the workstations. A few hours later, the now empty stand was removed from the building and taken to the Sanchez site for storage. First thing on Sunday morning, a Block 2 ship lifter was brought over to Mega Bay 2 from the Sanchez site. Eventually, the lifter was taken into the building, attached to one of the bridge cranes and lifted off its stand. A short time later, the ship cryo-proofing stand was brought over and staged outside the bay. Late that afternoon, the door opened and the stand was taken inside. Several hours afterwards, Ship 35 was lifted off one of the work stands and placed onto the awaiting cryo-proofing stand. Then, as the calendar flipped over to Monday, the ship headed out of the build site and rolled up Highway 4 towards the Massey outpost. This rapid rollout of this ship for testing just a few days after Ship 34's in-flight failure was quite surprising, as SpaceX doesn't seem to have had much time to develop or implement fixes for the issues with the current ship design. After dawn that morning, a fresh set of dummy Starlink satellites arrived and were taken into Star Factory. 
Given the failure of Ship 34, it seems likely that Flight 9 will have a very similar profile to Flight 7 and 8, including a satellite deployment demonstration. A little later, a pair of trucks arrived with a load of structural steel. The deliveries were taken into Star Factory, likely for installation where we saw concrete removed earlier in the week. Around that same time, the jib for SpaceX's large crane was spotted leaving the launch site and heading up Highway 4 towards the storage yard out near the Massey outpost. It wasn't immediately clear if the crane is being reconfigured, taken apart for maintenance, or if something else is happening. Around lunchtime, rover camera caught another piece of the white fabrication hardware being moved from the Sanchez site to Star Factory. Another day at Starbase meant another day of steady action at the tank farm expansion. More pump stands, prefabricated skids, and high-pressure gas tank racks were delivered and pipe sections were lifted into place. That evening, the chopsticks at Pad A were closed and lowered to the hard stop at the bottom of the tower following post-launch and catch inspections. Back at the build site, another truckload of hardware was delivered and taken into Star Factory. That night, a peek through the building's front door showed where the steel that was delivered earlier had been staged inside. On Tuesday morning, several concrete trucks arrived one after another and backed into Star Factory, presumably pouring the new footings for the staged steel columns. Tuesday was another busy day at the launch site with seemingly continuous deliveries of new hardware for the tank farm expansion as well as the installation of previously delivered components as SpaceX works to get the second launch pad online this year. Several truckloads of dirt could be seen driving up Highway 4 out of Starbase from beyond the D4 gate. This dirt is being removed as part of a road project to add a roundabout between the launch site and Boca Chica Beach. Up the road at the build site, crews could be seen reinstalling the Marscape mural on the side of the parking garage. This was recently removed following some wind damage. A fresh load of engine shielding was seen arriving at the main build site gate and heading in between High Bay and Mega Bay 1 for offload. And later that afternoon, crews were spotted lifting a steel plate for installation on the side of the new Pad B launch mount as SpaceX works to get the complicated hardware constructed before the pad is ready. Over at the Massey outpost, the tank farm was spooled up and Ship 35 began its initial round of cryogenic proof testing. SpaceX loaded liquid nitrogen into the rocket's methane tank before eventually detanking for the night. Back at the launch site, what appeared to be one of the shorter, large diameter cryopipe sections was lifted for installation in the new Stage Zero. Late that night, Ship 36's aft section was moved from Star Factory to Mega Bay 2 as this latest Starship nears its full height. Overnight, another boom section from SpaceX's large lattice boom crane was spotted heading away from the launch complex and towards the storage yard up the road. On Wednesday, an empty white stand was moved from Star Factory to Mega Bay 2. Another subcooler was brought to the launch complex and rolled inside to await installation inside the expanded farm. A new mobile office arrived at the build site, possibly to serve as the construction office for the upcoming demolition of High Bay, followed by the building of Giga Bay. The Starlink dispenser installation jig was moved from Star Factory to Mega Bay 2, loaded with a new dispenser. With Ship 36 wrapping up its stacking operations, it appears that SpaceX is wasting no time preparing to start stacking Ship 37. Early that afternoon, Ship 35 underwent a second round of cryogenic testing at the Massey outpost. This time, the rocket appeared to be loaded with a full load of liquid nitrogen before detanking. In the early hours of Thursday morning, more sections of SpaceX's crawler crane headed out towards a storage yard as it really starts to appear that the entire crane is being disassembled. Later on Thursday, a pair of excavators with demolition hardware were delivered to the build site, yet another sign that High Bay and Stargate building won't have much longer at this site. Two of the vaporizers damaged during Flight 8 and subsequently removed from the tank farm were loaded onto trailers, then driven out of the launch complex and away from Starbase. That afternoon, the recently delivered subcooler was lifted and maneuvered into its final position at the tank farm. Around that same time, Ship 35, with its initial cryogenic proofing now complete, began rolling through the Massey outpost and onto Highway 4. Several hours later, the rocket arrived back at the build site and was taken into Mega Bay 2. A while later, the Block 2 shiplifter was brought over and attached to Starship's lifting points. 
Unfortunately, but not surprisingly, the door was closed before we could see the starship lifted onto one of the work stands. That night, however, the door was opened and the starship lifter once again empty was placed back onto its stand and returned to the storage area at the Sanchez site. Switching over to Florida on Sunday morning, Falcon 9 Booster 1090 was raised vertical at Historical Launch Complex 39A and the crew arm extended in preparation for the Crew 10 mission. That night, the booster performed its pre-launch static fire, proving out the health of the nine Merlin engines ahead of launch. On Monday afternoon, Just Read the Instructions was towed out to sea in preparation for booster recovery on an upcoming Starlink launch. On Tuesday, the crew access arm was retracted and Booster 1090 laid back down for additional checkouts ahead of launch. That afternoon, a payload fairing likely containing a load of Starlink V2 mini satellites rolled past the vehicle assembly building on its way to SpaceX's horizontal integration facility. A short time later, Booster 1090 was once again raised into its launch position out at Launch Complex 39A. Following one aborted attempt, the crew access arm was eventually extended out to Dragon Capsule Endurance. Meanwhile, Bob headed out to sea in support of the Starlink Group 12-16 launch. And late on Wednesday, Falcon 9 Booster 1069 launched on its 22nd mission as it carried another 21 Starlink satellites on their way to low Earth orbit. And there you have it, another SpaceX and Starbase weekly update brought to you by Lab Padre. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button if you haven't already, guys, and we'll see you next week. Thanks for watching. Lab Padre out.